analytic trigonometry, proving identities. This is number 11. So uh, obviously what the, our job here is to prove that the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side by only changing one side or the other, and I choose the left-hand side, I guess. Um, the first thing I'm seeing here is, see, secant is 1 over cosine, and tan is sine over cosine, so I think I can put those together. So I'm going to take, I'm going to replace this, if you don't mind. I'm going to replace this with this. Take 1 over cosine u minus sine u over cosine u. Um, and then this is, let's do this for a second. I'm not going to do it. Oops. Oh, I, I think I know what I'm going to do. This is 1 over sine u, isn't it? Right, this secant u is 1 over sine u, right? And then 1, because what, uh, what I'd like to do in a perfect world is have this all under the, over the same denominator. So if you don't mind, what I'm doing is this plus sign right here is this plus sign right here. And 1, right, any number over itself is 1. So I'm going to take, if you don't mind, I'm going to say that 1 is the same as sine u over sine u. And if you're asking why I'm doing that, I would ask you to just take a look for a second. What made me think to replace this one with sine u over sine u is that, well, two things. One is that I'd like to add these two pieces together to get a, to get a, a more simplified thing. The other thing is this. I don't know if, you've, if you're noticing this, but look. Here's 1 plus sine u here. And over here, we're going to get 1 minus sine u. So it looks like we have the makings of a perfect square, don't we? So I'm just going to put all this crap over here together, if you don't mind. And that gives us... 1 minus sine u, doesn't it, over cosine u. And we're going to be multiplying that times 1 plus sine u over sine u. Right? But look what happens. So we're going to multiply these things. Remember that we're expecting this to turn into cotan of u, aren't we? So this is what I'm asking you to start to, start to think in this way, that I'm looking at this piece now, I'm like, you know, I have difference of squares here. So if I go ahead and do this multiplication, right, if I FOIL this out, and you don't need to do the FOIL of it, but if you FOIL this out, you're going to see that you're going to get 1, because 1 times 1 is 1 squared, which is just 1, aren't you? And negative times negative is a negative, and sine u times sine u is sine squared u over cosine times, cosine u times sine u is cosine u sine u. Right? Remember that we have to keep trying to prove that what we really have is cotan u over here, right? <clears throat> so here's the next thing I'm going to take. This is not helpful to me in this form, but look, we have these Pythagorean identities, don't we? Can, uh, it, just let me skip pages just for a second and come back to this. Right? So I'm, look, I'm thinking of this Pythagorean identity that says this, that, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So what I, what I have over here, look, we have over here, if we have 1 minus sine u, so you might be asking, so what? Well, 1 minus sine u. What if I so solve for cosine squared u here? I'll get 1 minus sine squared u, wouldn't I? Uh, I, I know what you're thinking, all these u's and thetas, but they're the same thing, aren't they? So cosine squared theta, cosine squared u is the same as 1 minus sine squared u. Well, look, here it is. So what I'm saying from the page we just went to is that this thing has a Pythagorean identity of cosine squared u, doesn't it? So I'm going to replace that, and we're almost done here. So we have cosine squared u over cosine u sine u. Well, now I'm looking at this. I'm looking at cosine squared u over cosine u, right? would be just cosine at the top, so it would give me cosine u at the top, and at the bottom I would still have my sine u. And remember, cosine u over sine u is supposed to equal cotan u. Well, it does, doesn't it? This is a reciprocal identity, so we have this done, reciprocal ID. So um, I don't think I can convey strongly enough to, to all of you trying to do this math that the only way to do it is just to keep doing problem after problem after problem. And keep going back to your Pythagorean, I, I'm sorry, to your fundamental identities. There are eight of them. And keep messing with those things, and you'll start to see the pieces. So good work. And I know this is, um, well, it's not. It's not easy stuff. So good work.